Okay. Yay! Good job. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. Uh, turning, turning. You know what? Using wood chips on the ground as some sort of, I don't know, insulator. I think this is a good idea. Might be safer for Zach this way than just having him play directly on the ground. We do have a bit of grass, but as you know, we keep our lawn trimmed. And that little bit of grass won't serve as a good enough cushion for Zach to play on. So maybe I could copy this playground. As you can see, they have a layer of wood chips all over the playground. Maybe this is something that I could do myself. When going for wood chips, of course there's always going to be the chance of splinters. I would have to check how easily the wood breaks apart and fragments. Because of course you have to be you have to be careful around children. how it looks like now that we've spread around the mulch and we've only used one cubic meter of kids play mulch it looks fine but maybe it's better if we add a bit more depth maybe have it reach all the way here otherwise it's doing good so far and the best part here is Now have lots of space. There's more space for us to play around in now. And this is good since Zach is starting to get more hyper. So this is perfect. And now onto this space. We're thinking of getting rid of this little square here. By winter, these chilies over here, they would be they would probably die out. So what we're going to do is to remove them and transplant them elsewhere. And we'll let the grass grow over the plot again. With this area clear and reset, then we we'll provide you a good view of the landscape that I will be working along the fence. So in preparation for the new area along the fence that I'll be working on, I, fig I figured I could go out and gather a few more rocks that I can use in the landscape, you know, to create points of interest or maybe if I just want to raise some areas. 
So I turned to Facebook Marketplace and looked for free rocks that are available near me. I found a few and one of them has responded to me so I'm going out shortly to pick them up. And just so we're not confused about what sort of rocks I'm talking about, it's one of those large honeycomb volcanic rocks. Let me show you. That's what I was talking about. So I'll be gathering a whole lot of them. I don't know, as much as I can. Because I think it's better to have more than what you need than not having enough and you know, regretting not getting more. So that's a plan. We did some work on the area, clearing it out, and uh, we picked up a bunch of rocks. These are all from Facebook Marketplace, so I got them for free. Right now, I still have no plans about uh, the layout, but it might be a good idea to give you a teaser of what I had in mind. So, as you can see, this space is rather huge, and it would take lots of plants to fill them up. So, part of what I intend to do is to do some companion planting or also known as co-planting and this means I will be picking non-succulent plants that are also drought resistant and use them together with my succulents to form my xeriscape garden. I was recently working on project locks removing some echeverias because they were getting too crowded. Actually let me show you what I mean. I have removed a few of the large echeverias right here because they're starting to crowd into each other. I'll be covering more of that in the next video. All you need to know right now is I just said I temporarily moved them to pots and moved them out into the new space just to get a feel of the arrangement and the amount of space that I would need to, to properly arrange them. So far I moved a lot of freelies out including a flapjack and most of these plants came from Project Lux. And what you're seeing here are this is a Mona Loa, this is a Tutti Frutti, that's a Dick's Pink, this is a Zorro, this is a Fire and Ice. It's a flapjack and as mentioned in previous videos we're planning to remove those plants over there as well as the plants over in that corner. This little plot will be going as well. So once we clear up this space grass will eventually grow over it again. So we'll just be leaving this on its own. Now can you imagine what you can do with all of this space? I mentioned co-planting and I definitely want to mix it up here. Now in this section to the right I'm thinking of adding a bit of tulips so I would have a rock structure somewhere over here in this side and towards the, the edge, towards the fence I would be mixing lots of colors and right now my top choice would be tulips We are now nearing the end of summer and heading into autumn and sometime in autumn is a planting season for tulips We have an upcoming flower and garden show in Melbourne in mid-March so I'll definitely be buying several bulbs of tulips you might be wondering why tulips? Well, I've learned that the growing conditions for tulips and echeverias are actually similar. 
This might come as a surprise to some people, definitely was a surprise to me. When we think tulips, we usually think of the Dutch, but actually tulips originated from Turkey. I didn't know that. While some of them started out in Turkey, it's believed that many varieties came in from, actually came into Turkey from Iran and Central Asia. Well, actually, tulips are indigenous to mountains with temperate climates and I can pretty much say the same with Echeverias. Lots of them grow in rock faces, high up in the mountains. And what makes them perfect for co-planting is that, as you know, succulents have really shallow roots, while tulip bulbs tend to go deeper. So after planting a bulb and they start growing, it, it burrows itself deeper into the ground, spreading its roots. So if you imagine that this is ground level, so mostly at the top would be succulent roots and deep down would be tulip roots. The, the good part about this is Echeverias and tulip have different growing seasons. Echeverias typically grow during the warmer months while tulips, while tulips require the colder months before they start sprouting and they typically come out in spring. So there's a, there's a symbiosis there going on. Allow me to further explain. Let's take winter for example. Echeverias are dormant at the time, so they they take in a lot less water than they normally do when they're growing. The soil would be drenched. That's why it becomes a lot easier to overwater Echeverias during winter. So with Echeverias, you end up having drenched soil for days. If you mix them with tulips, the tulips would pull out all of the water from the soil during winter, and and that means that the Echeverias would not be sitting in wet soil for longer than they need. The reverse is true during the during summer. So as you know, the growing period of Echeverias are during the warmer months. So what they would do is to gather as much water as they can. That way, not a lot of water would seep through to the tulip bulbs. So they're helping each other. And it's a perfect symbiosis. And I'm so glad that I learned this recently. And just in case you were wondering how I came up with this idea, I actually learned it from Attila Capitani. And if you're down here in Australia, or if you happen to be following, you know, big names in in xeriscaping and succulent care, you probably know him. He recently gave a talk on growing succulents, and he shared he shared this information about, and he mentioned this idea of planting tulips with succulents, and I, and I got so excited when I heard that because you know, this is my thing, xeriscaping. So I can't wait to start shopping for tulip bulbs. As of the moment, I'm, I'm perusing all of the resources that I can about tulip care, and I have about about a month left before I could I should start planting them. So it's not too long, and and I have the space where the tulips already cleared out. So I'm almost ready. I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, especially Oscarino. Julie Seal and Snap Cooey. You can find my Patreon by clicking on the link down below. It's patreon.com slash seriscapades. There's so many things to do, so much space. It's so exciting. So if you have any suggestions on other drought tolerant plants that you want me to use, I have the space for it. Simply drop your comment below and I'll look into it. I'll do my own research and see if it's something that I could use. So the, the main idea, again, the main idea is to have a xeriscape garden, which means that they can survive droughts. Ergo, I don't have to water them as much. Some of the other plants that I was thinking was lavender or, I don't know. I only know a little off the top of my head. There are several, there are several native plants that I want to use as well, like uh, kangaroo's paw. I used to have some before, but I... But I planted them at the wrong season and they just burnt. But I've seen it work in succulent gardens, so yes, they're pretty good. So like I said, if you have any other suggestions, just comment down below. And I'll see you in the next episode.